good to be with you today. We're going to do a little chair yoga class together. So this is for anyone who doesn't want to get on and off the floor for whatever reason. Maybe they're healing um, a hip injury, or they don't like to get on their knees, or for whatever reason. We are going to be standing and in and out of a chair. For the Shavasana or the final relaxation at the end, I will be getting on the floor but if you would like to stay in the chair or get in a bed, that is also an option. This is Rocco. Hopefully he stays in his bed, but I can't guarantee it. Um, we're going to start off sitting in the chair. And I'm not real tall. My legs aren't real long. So unless I'm all the way at the edge of the chair, it can be helpful to have blocks underneath because I'd like a 90 degree angle between my knees and hips and knees and ankles. So if you don't have blocks and you're short like me, then you might want to scoot to the edge of your chair. So we're going to start by just um, taking a minute to appreciate that we're here. Take a big breath in and a long noisy breath out. Maybe shake the shoulders a little bit. I'd like to do a roll. Inhale them up and exhale them back and down. Now this is a free yoga class and I was trying to think of a theme and I thought, you know what? The best things in life are free. So just think about all the other things that exist in your life that are totally free. The people the flowers outside, and just think of a specific event that happened in the last day or two that um, might bring a smile to your face or a little lightness to your heart. I asked this, I asked this question to, or prompted this same thought to a class earlier this morning, and the first thing that came to mind for me was I was at um, Hashua, which is a park with friends and Morocco yesterday. And from the top of the hill, I could see him rolling on his back, which means that he found something stinky and he wanted to smell like that something stinky. At the moment, I was not really pleased about it, but now, 24 hours later, thinking back on it, it makes me smile. So. Think about something, maybe it made you smile in the moment, or maybe in hindsight, it can bring a smile to your face. So just breathe that in for a minute. And we'll find as much length as we can in our spine. So imagine a string attached to the top of our head, helping to lift us tall. And we want to think about our alignment. So I mentioned a 90 degree angle between the hips and knees and knees and ankles. And we also want to have our shoulders right over our hips and our ears right over our shoulders. So our daily lives often bring our head forward and around our back. So we just want to think about as much length again as we can. And sometimes purposefully giving ourselves a double chin can create some extra length in our neck, maybe give a little openness to our upper back. And we don't have to stay like that for long, but just check in. Little double chin and then soften it. So now we've taken a few big breaths in and out. And we're gonna settle into our yogic breath in and out through our nose. And we'll see if we can soften the muscles in our face, between our brows, at our jawline. Sorry, Rocco's chewing is gonna make me laugh. He likes that new toy. So we're next going to work on engaging the belly muscles. So 
we're gonna work up to a chair sit up. So we don't have to get on the floor to do our sit ups. But we're gonna focus first on just engaging the muscles. So we could put a hand on our belly. And on our exhale, we're gonna think about pulling the belly in away from our hand. So the belly button goes straight back towards the spine. over the next few exhales, let's see if we can increase the intensity of that abdominal contraction. And then we can relax there. We're going to bring our attention to some lower muscles in the pelvic floor. So imagine we're just trying to lift those muscles up. The muscles that we're sitting directly on, these are also sometimes referred to as our Kegel muscles, but we're gonna imagine we can lift them up and away from the seat of the chair. And if we could connect that to the breath, that would be an option as well. This is a vinyasa class, and we're always trying to connect the breath to the movement, even if the breath, or even if the movement is really subtle and just like this, but just like the pelvic floor. So on our exhale, we do that little lift. There must be a fly in the room. I saw something. So then we are going to turn this into a chair sit up. So I'm going to scoot myself. I'm going to turn the chair just so you can see from the side. But I'm going to scoot myself a little farther back in the chair, but still leaving some space between my back and the back of the chair. And I'll bring my shoulders to rest. And on the exhale, again, pulling the belly in. But I'm also going to bring my head back over my hips. On that exhale, sitting nice and tall. This is where I need the grounding for my feet because my hips are farther back in the chair. Inhaling back and exhale, pulling the belly in, sitting tall. Now we can make this more of a challenge if we scoot our feet, or sorry, if we scoot our bottom further and I bring my feet to the ground. So we'll inhale, sit tall. Exhale, come on back. Inhale. While we're back here, exhale, pull the belly in and sit up. So this is not a firm seat, so this makes it a little bit more challenging than maybe it needs to be. If you're on a firm chair, this is gonna be a little bit easier to do. So on that exhale, pull the belly in and sit tall. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, pull the belly in and come on back. Again, inhale, rest. Exhale, pull the belly in and sit tall. So we're moving on the exhale, engaging the belly on the exhale, and resting just for a breath, just as we breathe in, either sitting up or leaning back. come back to where we started, sitting tall in our chair with our feet grounded. And we're going to prepare ourselves for a twist. So imagine we have a plumb line going from the crown of our head to our tailbone, and we're just rotating on the axis of our spine. So we're careful not to tip sideways. We want our shoulders to stay parallel to the ground with that twist. And we're not forcing it any more than we could go just under the control of our own muscles. But we're gonna add some arms. So we inhale and lengthen, and exhale gently twist, so we're reaching one finger to the outside of the opposite leg, hand can come to the hips, or to that side on the hip. And we'll again inhale back to the center, 
and exhale, gently twist to the other side. We'll continue that flow, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, gent gently twist. So we're just twisting from the rib cage up. If we'd like to add more arms into this, if it's okay on our shoulders, we're gonna inhale, arms up, and exhale, gently twist. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, gently twist. And we'll meet back at the center. Again, sitting nice and tall. And we're gonna bring our attention to our feet, where they're grounded. So we can do this sitting down or standing, so I'll demonstrate both. So first, we're just gonna tap the toes. So lifting them up off the floor, we're strengthening the muscles around the shin. And connecting breath to this, inhaling, exhaling. He's off camera, but he is on the table right now looking for crumbs. <laughs> okay, so now we've warmed up the front of the ankle and the muscles of the shin. The next part I'll demonstrate again first sitting down and then standing where we're just lifting the heels. So if you'd like to do the standing, we're getting the benefit of a little bit more strengthening because we have more body weight. So, standing nice and tall, we'll inhale up and exhale, come on down. So, nice benefit of the chair because we can use it for our balance. So, we only want to go as high as we feel controlled. If we'd like to challenge the balance a little bit more, maybe we shift to just one or two fingers. But again, only working within the range where we feel steady on our ankles. So, if we're doing a wobble, Go up a little less high next time. So we're always looking for that just right challenge. Not too hard, not too easy. That Goldilocks zone of just right. Inhaling up and exhaling down. One more time, inhaling up, exhaling down. Just going to scoot the chair so we have access to the whole mat. And we're going to start off in one of our lunges. So again, this can be done sitting or standing. I'm going to demonstrate first standing. So we're going to set our right foot back. We're in our high lunge. This is a bit of a balanced challenge because both feet aren't grounded. Our back heel is off the ground, but our hips and knees and toes are all pointing in the same direction. If we prefer to do this sitting, we're gonna be on kind of the edge of the chair, and this is gonna look like this from a seated position. So we're kind of hovering on the corner. So in our high lunge, we're going to have the option to add arms. So we could do one arm at a time if we need to hold on, or we can flow with the arms in our breath. So inhaling arms up, and exhale to a goalpost position. So our elbows are reaching in opposite directions, open across the chest, inhaling up, exhaling to goalpost. Our eyes could follow the movement of our hands if we'd like, or if we want to find a dristi or a focal point on a diagonal down and away, that does help a little bit more with the balance. Inhaling 
inhaling arms up, exhaling to goal pose. We're going to meet back, standing tall in our mountain pose. So let's just bring our attention to our mountain pose, and we'll start from the bottom and go to the top. So we start with our feet. And we want our feet to be hip width apart and not hip muscle or hip tissue, but hip bone. So find the front of the pelvis, draw a line down. It should intersect between the second and third toes. You don't have to actually draw a line down, but you get the idea. We're not too wide and we're not too narrow. Then we're going to bring our attention back up to our knees, make sure they're not hyperextended or locked, but there's just a tiny bend, a micro bend. So maybe nobody else can see it, but you can feel it. Then we'll bring our attention up higher again to that pelvic floor or our mula bandha and lift there. And then to our abdominal muscles, <clears throat> or I did it wrong, mula bandha and uddiyana bandha are the two. <clears throat> So we're going to pull that belly in, shoulders are relaxed and soft. See how it feels to bring the hands away from the chair. We always have it as an option, but we can use it to find that length in our spine as our fingertips reach for the floor, our shoulder blades reach down toward our hips, and we have that same string attached to the top of our head lifting us tall, little tiny double chin, and then soften it. So each time we come into our mountain, that's kind of our mental check, bottom to top. You can go top to bottom, whatever you prefer, but just checking that alignment. And we'll do the same thing, other side. We're going to step left leg back into our high lunge. The belly's pulled in, shoulders are relaxed back and down. We can hold on and breathe here, or if we'd like, we can flow the arms, inhaling them up, exhaling to our goalpost or cactus arms. With or without the head movement, started with the core engagement sitting in the chair just to wake up those muscles because we want to keep our core engaged when we're upright in our poses to keep our back safe to help with our balance and we can step back to our mountain just a quick check bottom to top feet knees pelvic floor abdomen shoulder blades chin and head Check in with the breath again, that yogic breath as it travels in and out through our nose. And we're going to come to our chair. We're preparing for our chair. <laughs> so we'll start by sinking our hips back and check that our knees are behind our toes and we can wiggle our toes. And then see how it feels to bring the hands to the heart or if it's okay on our neck and shoulders, we could extend the arms. That chair is always there if we need it. So while we're holding that pose, we feel that breath flowing in and out through the nose. And we'll meet back in our mountain. So we're going to flow a little bit between our chair and our mountain. We'll inhale our arms up and exhale, sweep the arms around, let them come to the heart, sinking into our chair on the exhale. And we'll stand back into our mountain. If we'd like to swing the arms out in front, we can inhale them up and exhale them back and down and extend them out in front. 
Each time our knees are happy, they're working within the range that they're comfortable in. So we don't want to go too low that we're causing pain. We want to find again that just right happy space and the weight is in our heels each time. So we'll inhale back to our mountain. Exhale, feeling the shoulders relax. And we'll continue that flow. So we're always going at our own pace. Doesn't matter what pace I'm going. Everyone's following their own breath. We inhale up. Exhale to chair. We can keep that flow going if you'd like. Inhaling up. Exhaling to chair. If you like to have that chair behind you as you're getting ready to move into the chair pose, that can be very comforting to know that it's right there. So we just barely touch down. in and out of our chair and mountain, that's our chair flow. We're going to add a piece to that. Let me see if I can distract him for a second. So we're going to add a forward fold to our chair flow. So I'm going to demonstrate again with the chair because it can be really helpful here, especially if you don't want to have too much hip flexion. If you're healing a hip injury or following a hip surgery, or if you're healing a back surgery, or just don't want to bend all the way over for a variety of reasons. So the, the um, forward flow, forward fold, as we add to our chair flow, when we're using the chair, looks like this. We inhale our arms up, we exhale swan dive, and come right here to the chair. Now we can have hands on the chair, or if it's okay to come down a little farther, we can have elbows on the chair. So we're hinging here at the hips. We have a little bend in the knees. And when we reverse it, we take a deeper bend and inhale, arms up, and back to our mountain. So if there is history of an osteoporosis or osteopenia diagnosis, then sometimes it's not a great idea to do forward flexion all the way to the ground. So meaning we don't want to go all the way down in a forward fold. So this is a better option. So just offering that as well. So we'll add to that inhaling up, exhale to chair, inhaling up, exhale swan dive to our forward fold. Take a deep knee bend, reversing our swan dive, inhaling up, exhaling to chair, inhaling up, exhale swan dive to our forward fold. Continuing that flow, going at your own pace. One more time through that chair flow, inhaling up, Ex exhaling to chair, inhaling up, exhale, hinging at the hips, swan dive into our forward fold. Just enjoy being upside down for a moment. See if we can step back a little. Maybe relax our neck and our face a little. We're going to come back. Just 
slowly bring our head upright into our mountain. And we are gonna to move to our warrior two, which again can be done standing or sitting. If you'd like to do it sitting, again, on the corner of the chair, arms are parallel to the ground. So with that warrior two, that back foot is pointing toward the long edge of the mat. If you'd like to do that standing, you can hang onto the chair. Or you can extend the arm. That chair is always there for support if it's needed. See if we can soften the shoulders, send energy out through the fingertips. And again, we want to keep our joints happy. So maybe we don't want to sink quite that low. Maybe our hips happy, happier if we have less of a bend in that hip. We can still soften the shoulders and send energy out through the fingertips. We feel that breath flowing in and out through the nose. We draw the belly in and lift the muscles in the pelvic floor. Gaze softly out over the fingertips of the front hand, or just out in that direction. And then we're going to move to an exalted warrior. So we're going to release the back hand and lift the front palm. And inhale it up toward the sky. Feel that bottom rib pull away from the hip, just lengthening the side of the body. So from our extended, or from our exalted warrior to our extended side angle. We're going to go in the other direction. And feel that other bottom rib pull away from the other hip. And let's connect the breath and flow these two asanas, inhaling up. Finding that happy range, keeping our joints happy. Enjoying the flow of the breath, inhaling up and exhaling down. Come back to our warrior two, and we're going to take the same thing on the other side. Extended the toes pointing toward the short or toward the long edge of the mat. Softening the shoulders, extending the arm or holding onto the chair. Remembering to lift the pelvic floor muscles and draw the belly in. Lots of muscles are working. Our feet are kind of pushing in opposite directions. Our core is engaged. Energy is being sent out through the fingertips so the whole arm is really active. The muscles in our face, they can do whatever they want. So they can relax, they can smile, That breath is flowing in and out through the nose. And we'll begin that flow. We'll start off with the exalted warrior. So the front palm is up. And we lift, feeling length in the side of the body. And into our extended side angle. Finding that happy range for the hips. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And 
just one more flow, inhaling up and exhaling down. We're going to step back to our mountain. And check bottom to top, our feet, our knees, our pelvic floor, our abdomen, our shoulders, our neck. Feeling that breath again, in and out through the nose. If it feels safe for a moment, it's okay to just check in and close the eyes. Maybe we need a chair just to help with our balance. Just notice how we shift, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot, when we lose that visual input. And finding that just right challenge. Maybe the eyes close just for a second. Maybe we keep them closed for an extended period. If our eyes were closed, we can open them now, preparing ourselves for a balance pose. So we're going to do tree today. Let's see if I can get this at home. We'll come to our tree pose. So first we're going to shift our weight toward our left foot and we'll turn our right knee out. So we could just have a sassy hip but that's not going to benefit us and eventually it's not going to feel good. So we want to think about lengthening the spine again and pulling all muscles in closer to the bones. The thigh, thigh muscles, the belly muscles, pelvic floor muscles, just check that we haven't locked our knee. Remember that teeny tiny micro bend. Now the other heel comes off the ground and we can decide if at any point we'd like to bring the whole foot off the ground. That chair is there as an option. So we can bring hands to our heart. We could bring hands to goalpost. We could extend arms overhead. We can use that chair. <sighs> That breath is flowing in and out through the nose. We feel length in our spine. And when we're ready, we can come back to our mountain and we'll take the same thing on the other side. <laughs> so we'll shift. Shift weight to the other leg. Feel all the muscles pulled in closer to the bone. The knee has a micro bend. You feel that breath flowing in and out through the nose. Maybe the toes touch back down. Maybe we hang on to the chair. Eventually meet back in our mountain whenever you're ready. Nice. So we are going to move to um, a few stretches before our Shavasana or our final relaxation. So the first one is going to be a pyramid stretch. So we're going to step left leg back. Our hips and knees and toes are all pointing in the same direction. We're going to draw our belly in and hinge forward and so we feel the belly moving a little closer to our thigh and we feel lengthening in the back of that front leg. So the back of the hamstring feels long, gently stretching. <clears throat> Probably easier if I have the chair turned the other way for this one. So I can use it as a prop to come down onto my elbows if that's okay. So again, if we're avoiding too much hip flexion, we want to probably keep hands on the chair.
So when we think about dropping that right hip back, we're gonna feel more lengthening in that hamstring of the front leg. Got the right leg that's us in the front now. Again, softening the muscles in the face. Definitely like a crumb of rice or something in your couch. He's not going to let it go. We'll do the same thing on the other side into our pyramid stretch. So when we're stretching, we're going to save that to the end when we're nice and warm. And we're going to hold it for three to five breaths. Just really linger. Three to five long, slow breaths. Too. gentle stretch in the back of both legs. <clears throat> we can decide whether we're going to do our Shavasana in our chair, on the floor, on the couch, in a bed, wherever we're going next. That's what we're heading toward. <laughs> so I'm going to get on the floor. So sometimes I come down on my knees first. Sometimes I'll do a swan dive. <clears throat> Exhale and come on down before I get on my knees. One thing I like about the chair, there's lots of things, but I love to do legs up the chair or legs up the wall for my Shavasana. You're going to find a comfortable place again, sitting, laying on the couch, on the bed, finding our most comfortable position. So we're going to check in. Maybe we can roll the feet a little bit. Circling clockwise and counterclockwise with the toes. Maybe we can bring one or both knees toward our chest, making small circles. Again, if we're watching, we don't want to break that 90 degree angle. We're not going to do that on that hip that we're healing. The pelvic floor and the belly muscles can just totally relax now, just softening. We'll find our shoulders down away from our ears. And just a tiny little chin tuck. And then soften that. We have that same alignment that we did in our mountain. Ears over shoulders, shoulders in line with hips. Obviously my knees are not in the same plane, but they're still in line with the hips. Ankles in line with the knees. And we're going to check in with where it is that we feel the breath. I stole this from 10% Happier and Dan Harris and Sharon Salzberg. 
Mm -hmm. So feeling of the breath. So whether it's at the nostrils or the chest or the belly, our attention is on that sensation. And if it's comfortable, we can allow the eyes to close. And we feel perhaps a little tickle at the nostrils, or the rise and fall of the belly or chest. very kind to ourselves. We're letting go of judgment, We're letting go of expectations. And as we notice that our mind has wandered away from the sensation of the breath, we just gently bring it back. slowly going to begin to wiggle fingers and toes. We can stretch as we need to. We're going to take our time to come to a comfortable seated position. And if you've decided that it's time for bed now, sweet dreams, good night. If you want to just come to the end and give our little goodbye, you can do that as well. Rocco. Rocco. I was hoping he would come say goodbye, but off chasing them off. So we find length in our spine. <clears throat> we'll inhale our arms overhead. And exhale, bring hands to our heart. And thank you so much for joining me. Best things in life are free. <clears throat> May the light in me honor the light in you. Namaste.